I'm Sam and today we're going to learn all about pasta, what it's made from, how it's made and how it gets from here to the end of your fork at tea time. Now I wonder whether you can guess where I am. I'm in the country where pasta comes from, sunny Italy! And the lovely scene behind us right now is the Bay of Naples, which is where this lucky man comes from and uh, where he works. This is Giuseppe De Martino and he's our guide for today. Hello, Giuseppe. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you so much for having us here at your factory. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Very honoured to have you all here. Now, Giuseppe, his father and his grandfather have all made pasta here over the years. So I think it's safe to say that I don't think there's anything that this man doesn't know about pasta. Is that right, Giuseppe? That's correct. That's a three-generation <laughs> business. So tell us what we're going to see here today. We're going to see how pasta is made, starting from uh, the raw material, that is durum wheat semolina, how we mix it with water, how we give shape, how we dry it, so that then it gets a bag of pasta on the shelves. Fantastic. That sounds really exciting. Before we find out more about how pasta is made, let's meet the schools we have with us today on this online field trip. Hello, everybody. Hello, children. Give us a wave. Wave your flags. Woohoo! Let's go to Nidmi Mill in Edinburgh where Miss Miller's class is waiting. Hello children! Okay, let's go to St Anne's School in London where Mr Lancaster's class is joining in. Yeah, Hello, Mr Lancaster! Yeah. Hello! <laughs> That's a nice big cheer. And let's go to St Stephen's in Bath where Miss Dangerfield's class is there joining in. Hello, Hello. Miss Dangerfield! Hello children! That's a big scream. <laughs> and then to Heath School in Derbyshire, where Miss Wright's class is waiting. Hello, children. Hello, Miss Wright. Woohoo! Thank you so much for taking part, everybody. I know you've already been learning lots about Italy and also about pasta and how it's made. So we're going to find out a little bit about what you already know later on. But first of all, let's find out a little bit more about Giuseppe and his family. So Giuseppe, how long have your family been making pasta here in Italy? We've been making pasta since 1912. So it's 102 years we've been producing pasta in this very place. Fantastic. That is such a long time. In this actual factory or just in yeah, this area? It's uh, in this Factory is looked a little bit different at the beginning of the century. We are in Gragnano, which is the, the homeland of pasta, is where uh, pasta comes from uh, originally. is over 2,000 years of history, and is the only town where pasta gets a PGI, Protected Geographic Indication, from the European Community. So pasta di Gragnano is a special pasta. Wow! And we can see that handsomeness runs in the family. We have a nice picture of your grandfather. Oh, black and white picture here at this factory. Yeah. That's, it's very, very nice. Lovely family business that's been passed down. Yeah. It was uh, built here in 1912 because we have a spring water uh, under the factory. That is the water we use uh, to make our dough. And it's a special water that is uh, very low in calcium and helps the formation of the dough of the to make pasta. Fantastic. So you mentioned the water. That's one ingredient of pasta, but there's another really important ingredient, isn't there? A special wheat. Yeah. Uh, normal wheat is called soft wheat, in which you make uh, dough, you make uh, uh, pizza, b b bread and everything. Pasta is made of a special wheat called durum wheat. Durum, durum wheat. Durum in Latin means hard. That's ah. it. So it's the opposite of soft wheat. You have hard wheat, which in Latin called durum wheat. So durum wheat and water makes pasta. Let's watch a video now uh, to find out more about how pasta is made. What is pasta made from? Did you know that most pasta is made from just two main ingredients? Ever since Roman times, Italians have been mixing water and durum wheat semolina to form a tasty paste. Pasta is just the Italian word for paste. This special sort of wheat, durum wheat, is different to the wheat that's used to make bread. It's harder and contains a lot of protein. The climate in southern Italy is perfect for growing durum wheat. It's sunny and warm all year round. The farmer plants the seeds in October or November. The plants are then left to be watered naturally by the rain. The sunshine helps the durum wheat to grow stronger. And around seven or eight months later, the young green wheat plants have ripened and turned golden. This shows the farmer they are ready to be harvested. To harvest the durum wheat, the farmers use a combine harvester to carefully separate the grain, leaving the straw behind. Once the grains have been collected and checked for quality, they're taken to the mill house, 
which is where the next stage of the process happens. First, the grain is emptied from the lorries into storage containers, where it's kept before it goes into the mill. Next, the hard outer shell is removed. Then the grains are put through different types of mills to be ground up into fine semolina, which is used to make the pasta. Once the durum wheat semolina is ready, it's put onto a lorry and transported across the country to Giuseppe's factory in Gragnano, ready for the next stage in the process, where it will become perfectly shaped pasta. So we've now moved from the roof and we're inside the factory now and you can probably hear a little noise behind me. That is where the machines are making the pasta, isn't it Giuseppe? Correct. It's going to be really loud, we're going to go in in just a second, but first of all, what are we going to see inside? What we're going to see is uh, how pasta is really produced. So you're going to see this big machine in which the mixing is happening between the semolina of durumit and the water, then it's pressed at very high pressure on these uh, dyes uh, that are giving the shape to pasta then they cut to the length we want and then dry slowly inside those ovens where the water is coming out and you get a dry product that is stable for two years. So it's going to be really exciting and but, noisy. but loud yeah. and we have to put a special outfit on, don't we? What we need is uh, avoid that uh, anything Ooh. can fall inside your, okay. uh, inside your bowl of pasta. So oh, I say. Put this. <laughs> and a coat there. as well. And a coat. There we go. And then we can go in. Can I keep my coat and hat? Yes, of Am I course. allowed to do that? Okay, so please excuse us if we shout at you for the next couple of minutes. It's going to be very loud. Yeah. Okay, let's go in. In we go. Okay, what can we see here then, Giuseppe? What we see is basically the mixer that is up there. The semolina and the water gets inside the mixing tank and then is pushed through the dyes. Okay. And that is a dye. Let's go over to see the dye. So this is a dye. Yes, so this is a dye that gives the shape of uh, fusilli. So it's a push through here okay. and you get it from the other end. When you look at it at the length you want, you cut it. Fantastic. Where next? We're going to see the spaghetti. Okay. Spaghetti, wow! Pasta? Wow! Woohoo! Spaghetti oh. are very, are very uh, warm still because yeah. they've just been made and they have a lot of water so we need to take the water out. That's great! It's good to eat! We can eat? Oh, okay! Let's try them! Very nice, very nice. So spaghetti are hung and then dried. Okay. I'm going to show you the shape. Very loud. Woo. Okay, so here's the shapes now. That's, that's how our shapes are made. Shortcut pasta. Oh. So these are casarecce, they are twisted uh, shape. Both of them will go through the dryers and it will take between 20 hours and 48 hours to become dry and stable. Fantastic. Very, very nice. So, is this where it dries? Is this the oven? Yeah, these are the ovens. Okay. And pasta rests. Pasta rests here for one day or two days, slowly resting and drying until it gets finished to be packed. Very warm, they're really warm yeah. aren't they? How many ovens do you have? We have four ovens yeah. and we produce every day 140 tons of pasta. Woo, that's a lot of pasta! 1.4 million dishes of pasta. 1.4 million dishes, dishes of, of pasta. pasta? Every day. Every day? Yeah. That's crazy, wow. It's so loud, should we go back up on that Let's road? Okay, so we're gonna go back up on that roof where it's nice and quiet, but while we do that, here's a video that shows you everything that takes part here in Giuseppe's factory. How is pasta made? Locals say that the town of Gragnano was designed to channel the sea air up through the streets, where traditionally they would hang out their pasta to dry in the warm wind. This place really is the home of pasta. 
Here in Graniano at the Di Martino factory, the durum wheat semolina arrives regularly from the mills and goes straight into these special storage containers to keep it from getting wet or going mouldy. Up on the factory floor, this is where the pasta really starts to take shape. It all might look very automated and mechanical, but these machines are just recreating the same simple method of pasta making that Giuseppe's family have used for over a hundred years. They just make it all a bit quicker. The first step in making pasta is for the semolina to be thoroughly mixed with water. After the semolina and water have been mixing for a little while, they turn into a paste or dough. Next, this squidgy pasta dough is put through moulds. Different types of moulds will give different shapes. As the dough comes through the mould, it takes shape. At this point it will still be soft, so it now needs to be carefully dried. They hang up the fresh pasta to help keep its shape while it's drying. Once it's dry, the pasta is ready to be wrapped and boxed. Next it's put onto a lorry and shipped to the UK by boat. One week later, it'll be ready and waiting on a supermarket shelf near you. OK, so we're back on the roof. It's a bit quieter down here. It's nice and windy and breezy, actually, because <laughs> it was so hot in there, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's the wind that used to dry past outside oh, in the street. Oh, wow. But now you use a big oven, so it's yeah. much, much quicker. Yeah. I guess if you left it outside in the street, would not everyone run off with it now? No, also because <laughs> the traffic, the cars, it wouldn't be hygienic anymore. Oh, exactly, exactly. Good point. Tell us about the ingredients in your pasta, Giuseppe. So, like we said, the durum wheat semolina is the result of milling of durum wheat. Durum wheat only grows in the south of Italy yep. and uh, is uh, a different kind of wheat that has got uh, a memory of shape. So the protein in it, uh, once you give a shape after cooking, have got the ability to keep the shape uh, even after cooked. While soft wheat, uh, it's uh, soft. Right. So the dough is made by hand and you can make pizza, you can make it, but you cannot give a shape. Right. So that's why pasta historically has been made in so many different shapes. And Italian uh, use one shape with one recipe. Yeah, because you'd expect if it went into the water, the twisty ones would just go straight, wouldn't Correct. you? But it just stays twisty. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of durum wheat. Is that a technical term, twisty? <laughs> 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 well, I have been learning about pasta this week and um, I was quite surprised by some of it. And I know that pasta is a really good source of energy because it's full of carbohydrates, isn't yep. it? Um, and it's also a starchy food. And I think um, you, probably about a third of your daily intake should be of starchy food. In, the, in this case, uh, our carbohydrates, carbohydrates from pasta, are complex carbohydrates with a very low glycemic index. It means that it releases the energy very slowly. It makes you feel hungry longer after. And this is the, what is being used mainly by people that do marathon or the athletes because uh, it releases the energy very slowly. It's uh, a perfect meal, it's very balanced. It was used by the Roman soldiers because oh. they marched for very long and they needed to have energy that was released slowly through the day of, of marching. That's fantastic. So children, if you want to run around all day without feeling tired, eat pasta, isn't it? How much pasta do you eat? Italians, we eat 28 kilograms of pasta per person per year. English people, only three and a half kilograms. So there is a lot. Oh, you eat a lot more than us. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought I ate a lot of pasta. <laughs> Italians will eat pasta every day or five days a week. Oh, fantastic. Well, as we said, Giuseppe knows just about everything there is to know about pasta. So let's put that to the test. I think we have some questions from some of our children that are taking part in this online field trip. Let's go to St. Stephen's Primary School in Bath, where Miss Dangerfield's class are poised with questions. Hello, Miss Dangerfield. Hello. <laughs> Hello, children. That was nice and loud. Do we have someone to uh, ask a question for Giuseppe? How do you make different types of shapes of pasta? Great question. How do you make the different shapes of pasta? By changing the dyes. I have shown downstairs that little round thing. You change those ones and you make different uh, shapes. It's kind of like if you have Play-Doh either in your class or at home and we have those funny sort of shapes to push the dough through, just like that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they're called dyes. They're they can be dyes. Teflon or bronze. Fantastic. Great question. Do we have another question? How long does it take to make pasta? How long does it take to make pasta? That's a great question. It depends on the shape. If you talk of a spaghetti that is very thin, 
it can be 12 hours. If you go something like this, very thick, it can get up to 24 hours, even 48 hours. Okay, so the thicker, the more the it takes thicker, to dry. The thicker, the more it takes time to take the water out. Great, okay. Fantastic questions coming from St. Stephen's Primary. Anybody else from St. Stephen's Primary got a question? How much pasta do you make each day? How much pasta do you make a day? That's a great question. Overall, as a business, we do 840 tons per day. In this factory, is 140 tons. So it's uh, 1.4 million dishes of spaghetti or penne come out from this factory all over the world every single day. So tonight at tea time, there's going to be a lot of people sitting down <laughs> eating your pasta. That's so crazy. <laughs> Do we have one more question from St. Stephen's Primary School? How many different types of pasta are there? How many different types of pasta are there? That's great. In Italy, uh, there are over 300 different shapes. Uh, they're twisted, they are uh, la long, sh co run, they got ribs, uh, they're short, they're flat. Any kind of shape you can imagine is used to match it with an ingredient or with a recipe. So in Italy we have spaghetti with tomato sauce, penne with arrabbiata, linguine with clams, and you don't cross it, you know, it's uh, a science. Yes. So children, next time you're in the supermarket and going around by the pasta section, don't just grab spaghetti, just take a look at all the shapes and sizes. They will do now because they know a lot about pasta, don't they? <laughs> um, let's go to St. Thank you so much, St. Stephen's Primary. They were great questions. Let's go to St. Anne's School now in London, where Mr. Lancaster's class is waiting. Hello, Mr. Lancaster. Hello. Hi. We, hello. Hello, children. OK, do we have someone with a question for Giuseppe? What's the most important thing you need to think about while making pasta? What's the most important thing you need to think about while you're making pasta? Great question. It's a lot of little details, but uh, uh, the quality of the raw material and the time you need to give to dry, to rest in a proper and natural way are the most important thing. So you shouldn't rush it? No, you don't have to no. rush it. Otherwise, uh, pasta becomes very uh, fragile, it breaks when you cook it or it doesn't taste good, it's uh, too chewy or it's too gluey. The pasta has to be al dente. Al dente, yes, I knew that one. <laughs> okay, let's get another, there's only a few of you, so you can all ask questions, so who's next? Do you use different ingredients to make different kinds of pasta? Great question. Do you use different types of ingredients to make different types of pasta? That's a very good question, yes. Uh, for spaghetti, you need to use a particular kind of uh, uh, semolina that has got more strength to resist the fact you are twisting it. On uh, the penne or the conchiglione, you need another kind of quality that is uh, also the look, but also the ability to keep the shape uh, round or uh, to keep the ribs. It's important that during the cooking, uh, the protein holds together the starch. So, but it, depending on the shape you use. And for example, for uh, green uh, tagliatelle or uh, for other kind of product, you will use spinach. Uh, for example, or tomato to give a red colour to pasta. Fantastic. Who do we have next, Mr Lancaster? How many packets of pasta do you make every day? Yeah, how many packets of pasta do you make every day? You make around 200,000 bags of pasta every single day. So, it's uh, in terms of space, you need to imagine that it's more or less 600 cubic metres. So wow. imagine uh, a factory, this factory, every day we produce it in volume for pasta. That's crazy. So I'm looking across the, the roof of this. This is kind of the size of a football pitch, or maybe actually two football pitches put together, just to give you an idea of the size of this place and how much pasta is produced here every day. And where does it go to? All around the world? All every around the world. In England, uh, it's our biggest market, and uh, a lot of English people uh, love our pasta. Uh, and uh, all over the world, USA, uh, in uh, Canada, in Japan, Korea, South America, South Africa, Australia, everywhere. Spreading the pasta love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Lancaster, who else do we have with a question? What do you think the score is going to be for England and Italy Belgium? <laughs> um, and great uh, people there wants to know um, what the score will be when England plays uh, Italy in the World <laughs> Cup. 
you know, the best is going to win. Hopefully, we're going to watch it with a dish of pasta. Oh. So nobody will get... Uh, all friends. Yes, all friends. Yes. And all friends until when it comes to football. Huh? Yeah, when it comes to hopefully we're going to see each other again at the final. Yes. Okay, let's get another question from Mr. Lancaster's uh, class. At what age did you start making pasta? So, what age did you start making pasta? Great question. Making pasta or yeah. eating pasta? At what age? <laughs> both. You tell us both. Uh, in, uh, I, w I was born uh, on the perimeter of the factory, so I've always been involved inside producing pasta. I was two years old playing with uh, pasta and, uh, and uh, so for me it's been from day one. But people come here to start the training courses when they're 16, 17 and they normally get a job uh, after the school at 18, 19. You can eat pasta from the age of three months until you are 125 years old. Wow, yes. Um, after you need to look after it. Oh, fantastic. You mentioned playing with pasta. I'm sure that a lot of the children, when they were younger, or they maybe have used it in some art or craft way. Of course. So it's just, just so useful, isn't it? Not only just to eat, but you can do things with yeah, it as well. Yeah, they do uh, brass bracelets Bracelet. or, uh, or uh, necklaces. And... <laughs> Well, it's time to uh, look at different types of pasta now. And in the classrooms, uh, children, you should have bowls of pasta. So if you pass them around the class and take a look at all the different shapes and sizes and have a feel, and while you're doing that, we'll take a look at the pasta that Giuseppe's got here on the table. OK, we have... Uh, those ones are very traditional. They're called the paccheri. The translation in English are slaps. Oh. So because they're so powerful in their mouthfeel and how they taste, they are like a powerful slap on your face. So these are packery. Uh, then we have bow ties or butterflies. Uh, we have a nest of tagliatelle. They are replicating a bird nest. We have fusilli, that is a, a twisted product. Uh, we have uh, uh, things like snails for soup pasta. Uh, fusilli that are twisted. These are uh, original because they replicate the a curly hair of a princess that came to open the railway station here oh. in Gragnano, they're called Mafaldine. But also we have lasagne that mm -hmm. are flat. Every shape was designed and this designed for a recipe. These are conchiglioni, they're done filled and you bake them and they can be used also as finger food uh, for your party, the dinner Fantastic. parties and cocktails. There's so many types of pasta. Over 300. It's great, it's amazing. You can and have we've, one a day for a year. You could. We've learned so much, all these different shapes and sizes of pasta. We've learned how the shapes are made, yep. what goes into pasta. We've learned that having a little bit of pasta, um, you know, throughout the week is very, very good for you. It gives you lots of energy. One thing we haven't done, Giuseppe, is learned how to make it. And I know that all the children would love to have a go at making it. So shall we have a go? Absolutely, let's go. Yeah. Okay, so here's our table. This is all the ingredients you need then, is yes, it, to make pasta? Yes, there is nothing else that you need. Okay. This is uh, the durum wheat and the soft wheat, just to give it a different idea on the difference. When you mill this, so it means you break it, mm -hmm. the semolina, which is uh, uh, this uh, particular kind of flour, which is Ooh. much coarser than the standard soft uh, uh, wheat flour. That's what you use. Uh, and so let's do it. Okay. You move it um, inside the machine. You cannot do it with your uh, at home because you need a lot of pressure. I will show you. But uh, one ingredient, raw the semolina of durum wheat. You add a bit of water. The, the percentage is uh, 33%. And then you mix it. And then uh, if you really want to have fun, oh. you can do it with your hands. Oh yeah, get in there. Do you want, let me know if you need any water, I'll be your assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the children are going, I want to have a go at doing that. <laughs> it's the mucky bit that we love, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And this is uh, the, the dough. It's never uh, elastic like soft. So that's why it needs to go through the dye. That is... Uh, oh, okay, which makes the... Makes, makes the, the, the shape. And that's how it it looks like when it's uh, been yeah. uh, mixed for a while. You see, it's, it looks uh, like crumble. It looks like yeah. the top of an apple crumble, doesn't it? It does because that's how it should look, uh, crumbly, very uh, in a, in a granular way, not uh, uh, elastic like a pizza dough. That's the Fantastic. big difference. Fantastic. Pushed through the dye, very hard. Hard means 110 bar, so it only can be done by a machine. Great. And this was done even uh, five centuries ago, always with the machine. And then uh, once was the sun and the wind like today, 
drying it and then instead now we have to put it inside those ovens that replicates uh, the condition outside and we dry it nicely and slowly. Easy peasy. <laughs> um, everything um, that Giuseppe's just said is on the website as well. So if it went a bit quick, you can uh, recap on the website and give it a go yourself as well. Giuseppe, that's brilliant. Thank yeah. you. We need to find out from you, Giuseppe, before we go. What's your favorite thing about being a pasta maker? Being a pasta maker like we are is a great luck. First of all, uh, we, we eat a lot of pasta. That's the first luck. But we also travel the world and uh, tell people uh, the things we've been telling these lovely children uh, and understanding a little bit of Italian culture, which is made of uh, passion for food, uh, healthy living uh, and uh, have a good life. Uh, and uh, we're going around the world, they, these are the kind of things people like. And so we love to do it. You've got a good job, haven't you? You have <laughs> got a good job. Um, let's find out from Miss Dangerfield's class um, what they've learned today and what they've enjoyed. So let's go to St. Stephen's in Bath. Are you there, Miss Dangerfield? Yes, we're here. Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, children. So who would like to tell us what they have learned about pasta today? Sebastian, could you tell us where you are? What you learned? I found it interesting that you make so many pasta today. So, that you make so many pasta today. That was really interesting. Yeah, very interesting that you've made so much pasta per day. I didn't. I, I find it hard to believe as well. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's important that you produce 24 hours, seven days a week, so that the temperature in the dryers in the oven don't go down, and the quality is always high. And uh, there are loads of pasta lovers, so we need to please them and produce more and more. And you work hard. Um, anybody else learned anything interesting from Miss Dangerfield's class? Um, I've learned loads of different types. And also, um, carrot snakes. Yes. May didn't realise there were so many different types and didn't realise the different ways that you make the pasta, so she's learnt that today. That's fantastic, yes. So they didn't realise how many different types there were and the different ways that you make the pasta as well. I think we were all surprised by that. Yeah, this is the intriguing part. If you get involved and engaged, some of uh, the packet have got on the front best uh, this shape best used uh, with this ingredient uh, is a good exercise because uh, you have uh, a variation on your diet you italian eat everything uh, they eat seasonal products so during the seasons we change shape we change recipe and you get uh, something that is not boring pasta is not boring no. it's uh, exciting no. so changing the recipe changing the shape Let's go to Mr. Lancaster's class now. Let's go to St. Anne's in London to find out what uh, you children have uh, learnt today and what you've enjoyed the most. Um, I have learned, um, I have learned what, um, how you make pasta and what's in pasta. So that there's wheat in pasta and you also also in water and how simple it is to make it. So I think that somebody really enjoyed learning how to make pasta. Is that right, Mr. Lancaster? Yeah, yeah. That was Beth saying how much she enjoyed learning how to make pasta. Beth learned. So I think Beth's going to give it a go at home as well. Um, anybody else learned anything or enjoyed anything today? I've learned that it only takes two ingredients to make pasta. Balance learned it only takes two ingredients to make pasta. Yeah, it, you wouldn't believe it actually, but two ingredients to make pasta. Who'd have known? I thought it was a lot of ingredients. That's, uh, that's why it's healthy, that's why it's uh, safe. One ingredient that is raw material and the other one is water. So, as simple as that, the art is to make different shapes, dry it properly, and make this product to taste good for two years because that's how it lasts in your houses. So, it's a good stock of food. You always keep a bag of pasta at home. Yeah. Well, we have mentioned making pasta and you have showed us, but classes, you should have your own pasta making kits in your classroom so you can have a, have a go and uh, maybe can give Giuseppe a run for his money. Any, any last minute tips for the classes that are going to have a little go at pasta making? Always cook pasta al dente, don't make it too soft. Italians nice things that are nice and crunchy with still uh, their soul, their life in the pasta. Okay. So don't overcook it. Don't overcook it, that's the number one and tip. And that makes it even more digestible. And the other thing is uh, try to learn how to match one ingredient with one shape all okay. the time. And don't put too many things in. No, no. <laughs> My grandmother used to say that the best uh, recipe is made for only seven people with less than seven ingredients. They don't cook for more than seven minutes. 
That's such a good tip. Yeah. That is such a good tip. I'll listen to the uh, the master, Giuseppe. <laughs> okay, children, we have come to the end. We hope you've enjoyed learning all about pasta and how it's made, what goes into it, how the shapes are made. Um, don't forget, if you'd like to take part in a field trip, we can't fly you all the way to Italy, but we can take you to a, to a local farm or a local store to show you how your food is made and where it comes from. All the details you know are on the website right now, so do get in touch. Thank you so much to our school. Thank you to Nidri Mill School. Bye. Bye. Thank you to St Anne's in London and Mr Lancaster. Bye. 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 And to St Stephen's in Bath, Mr Dangerfield class. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for taking part. We'll see you next time. How do we say goodbye in Italian? Arrivederci. Arrivederci.